able to. Please stand. Romans chapter 6 and verse 22. Uh, and it reads, But now, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit resulting in sanctification and the outcome eternal life. Amen. Our message for this morning is very simple, church. It's okay to be a holy roller. It's okay to be a holy roller. You may be seated. Amen, amen, amen. You know, many times it, 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 uh, it bothers me when I hear people say, I don't want to hang out with that person. He thinks he's a holy roller. All right. Or she thinks she's holier than thou. Yes. And, 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 and you have to really understand the context in which someone is saying that. I would hope that they're saying that, looking at the person they're talking about, as that person really not being a holy roller, really not being holier than thou, but really being hypocritical in trying to act like they're holier than thou, but yet their skirt is hanging and everybody can see the hypocrisy that they're trying to perpetrate. I hope and pray we don't have an issue with people truly being holy rollers because it's all right to roll holy for yes, Jesus. Yes, Amen. Right. Amen. Yes, sir. So, 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 what we have here is a play on words, and so often times when we don't define what we're saying, those who are less uh, understanding of what we're saying can get the wrong meaning of uh -huh. what we're trying to say. Uh -huh. When we say, I don't want to hang out with a holy roller, if we're talking about somebody that's really holy, somebody who don't understand what we're saying would think that it is wrong to be holy. Uh -huh. Ain't nothing wrong with being holy. We've been talking about the last two weeks, thinking outside the flesh. We've been talking about that we don't battle against flesh and blood, but we battle against spiritual powers. And if we're going to become victorious against what we're battling, we got to get holy. Because if you're not holy, you're not set apart to God. If you're not set apart towards God, God is not working on your behalf. I don't know about you, but I need God on my side. I don't need God as an enemy of me. Yes, yes, yes. Likewise, in the Bible study, for those of you that come, amen? In the Bible study, we've been talking about the word consecration. You see, there's, there's, there's not much difference between the word consecration and the word sanctification. No, 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 no. See, in the Old Testament, it was important for the priests to be consecrated so that they could make atonement on behalf of the sinful nation. Right. And the priests had to be set apart, consecrated, purified, made holy so that they can serve as ministers to God and for God. See, God cannot use nothing that is unclean. He cannot use nothing that has not been made purified. He cannot use nothing that has not been made holy in his service. So in the Old Testament, we use the word consecration. Before the priest could make atonement for your sins, he had to consecrate himself. They had to kill bulls. They had to kill rams. They had to burn on the altar. They had to consecrate the altar. Every tool they held in their hand. If they had to hold a microphone in the New Testament, that microphone had to be made holy before the priest can go before God talking about speaking his words over the PA system. See, God is holy, and in order for us to move in the economy of God, we have to be holy as well. But I don't want to stumble you up on the word consecration. I'm going, I'm going to make it very simple for you. When we moved into the New Testament, we don't use the word consecrate anymore. We use the word sanctification. Being made holy. Because when I consecrate something in the Old Testament, be it a man, be it a, a, a piece of machinery, whatever it was, I had to kill an animal and I had to continuously kill that animal over and over and over again, different ones, in order to do that. But in the New Testament, with regards to myself, God made 
me holy through the process of sanctification, right. which came at the moment I accepted Jesus Christ. All right. Amen. But that's just the beginning of it. Amen. See, 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 the reason why many of us are struggling in right. being blessed. The reason why many of us are struggling in our relationship with Jesus Christ is because we are not holy. Ooh. We are not holy. How can God you? Well, wait a minute, I came to Jesus Christ. Well, sanctification is an ongoing process. It's an ongoing process. You got to come to Christ first, but once you come to Christ, you got to continuously work out your salvation with fear and trembling. So don't think because oh, I receive you, Jesus, as my personal Lord and Savior, I'm good, I'm in, I ain't got to do nothing else. You got to walk that sanctification walk. Let's look at the text here. If you, if you want to listen to what Paul has to say about it, he's talking to the Romans and, and he's trying to get them to understand this process of being made holy before God so that God can move upon us, so that God can work on our behalf. And we see here in verse 22 that sanctification is a benefit. Anybody got benefits? Anybody got benefits on their job? Thank God if you have a job. If you ain't got no benefits in this economy, thank God you have a job. Amen. But for those of you who have a job and got benefits, Amen. that's a wonderful thing. Amen. That means you can get sick and go to the doctor and ain't got to pay the entire bill. You got benefits. You got insurance. See, in the realm of spirituality, it ain't insurance. It's called assurance. And we see here that sanctification is a benefit. It says in verse 22, he's talking to the church in Rome. He says, but now, having been freed from sin. Well, what I'm talking about? Well, he says, you have been freed from sin. What does free from sin mean? Back up a few verses. Go to chapter 6 and verse 6 and 7. If you look at chapter 6, verse 6 and 7, it says, knowing this. You need to know some things, church. Knowing this. That our old self All was right. crucified right. with Jesus, right. that our body of sin might be done away with, yeah. that we should no longer be slaves to sin, yeah. for he who has died is free from sin. Right. So if you have come to Jesus Christ, you have died to sin, and right. sin no longer lives, you have been emancipated from sin, and now you are no longer a slave to sin, but don't think that you're not a slave. You become a new slave. Your new master now is Jesus Christ. Amen. Go back to verse 22. It says, having been freed from sin, Jesus freed us from sin. And it says, now that I'm free from sin, I am enslaved to God. Now, you derive your benefit. You derive your benefit. You know you got to be on the job at least 90 days before you get your benefits. <laughs> Here's the good part about the kingdom of heaven. Once you come to Christ, there is immediate grafting in. Of your benefits become effective immediately. You don't have to wait 90 days. There's no probationary period. You get sick, you can call on the Lord from day one. Use your PTO time. Look at the text here. It says, having been freed from sin and enslaved to God, you derive your benefit. What is your benefit? Everybody needs to know what their benefit is. It says, resulting in sanctification. So when you died with Christ and Christ rose with all power, you rose with all power. When you rose with all power, you have now received your sanctification. But that is only the beginning of your sanctification. Don't think it stops there. We need to understand that freedom from sin is the beginning of the sanctification right. process. The devil has duped many of us into thinking that once we become free from sin, through our acceptance, our identification with Jesus Christ, that we have done everything that we need to do and this race is already over because we've already won. Let me tell you something. How you walk the remainder of this race tells whether or not you really accepted the race in the beginning of the first place. God wants to know, are you shutting up or are you putting up? That's right. That's right. Yes, sir. It ain't about your talk. It's about your walk. Amen. That's 
So, so we see that we see that sanctification is a benefit, and I don't know anybody that don't need no benefits. <laughs> In, in this day and time of, of, of the economy being the way it is, in this day and time, the, the left can't talk to the right. The head that lost control of the tail. You don't know if your interest rate is going to balloon, whether it's been a fixed rate or not. Nation fixing to go into what they call it debt default. I know to some people that may become a shock to them because they never defaulted on nothing, but for most of us, we didn't default on this. We didn't default on this. I ain't worried about too many people going over and shooting themselves and jumping out of a 90 story building up in here. But I'm sure at one point or another, you didn't default on Ain't nobody a strange to the color of pink up in here. But the nation ain't never defaulted before. And there are some people that are shaking and quaking in their boots, wondering if the nation is going to default, if there's going to be a tomorrow, if their interest rate is going to balloon to where they can't afford their mortgage, or can't afford their car payment, or can't afford their tuition. You putting your faith in man? That's why you feel the way you do right now. You got to remember that you have been sanctified, saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. It's all right to be a holy roller. People who concerned about all that worldly stuff sure ain't concerned about being set apart to God. God says, my ways are not the ways of the world. God says, he who is dealing with the world and worried about the things of the world is not worried about things of the kingdom. Yes, yes. Right. Okay. He done told us over and over and over again the concept of Matthew chapter 6 and verse 33. Yes. Seek ye first his kingdom. Seek ye first his kingdom. Yes. He didn't say, seek ye first your 401k. Yes. He didn't say, seek ye first your car note, your house note. Mm, my Lord. He said, seek his kingdom. Yes. Amen. And then he didn't back it up with your house note, your 401k or your car note. He backed it up with, then seek his righteousness. Amen. So before I've got to worry about anything yes. that I want, I need to worry about the kingdom and I need to worry about his righteousness. Yes. I get the kingdom right, I get the righteousness right, all of these things will be added unto me. Somebody say, out of order. Out of order. We out of order. Say it, say it. We out of order. Say it, say it. This country is out of order. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And until we get back in order again, you can toss that song out the window. God bless America. He blessing those whom he choose that live in America. That is your setting apart. That is your holiness. That is your state of peculiarness. That is your benefit as a believer in the kingdom. But as a whole, this nation ain't blessed. Look at the text. Look at the text. We go. We go. I want you to turn with me, if you will, to First Corinthians. Turn one book to the right over here. First Corinthians. Chapter 1 and verse 30. 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 30. You need to understand, we're talking about being made holy. We're talking about sanctification. We're talking about our daily walk. We need to understand that Jesus became our sanctification. Jesus became our sanctification. You have here Paul talking to the church of Corinth, and he says in chapter 1 and verse 30, but by his doing, that's, that's God, but by God's doing, you are in Christ Jesus. I am so glad that I'm in Christ Jesus. That's the Holy Spirit. If God is in me, that is the Holy Spirit within me in the form of the Father and the Son manifesting himself to me in the Spirit. You are in Christ Jesus who became to us, God became to us three things. He became wisdom, uh -huh. 
So I don't care if I'm dyslexic. All right. All right. Once God All right. got in me, once I became in Jesus, uh -huh. I'm wise. Uh -huh. I'm not thinking on my own terms. I'm thinking on a spiritual level. You want to know how to think outside the flesh? You got to have Christ in you. All right. You got to be in All Christ. Right. Right. You have to be right. filled with the All Holy right. Spirit. Right. So not only am I wise, it says, now nah, I am righteousness. Right. If I'm in Christ, I am a righteousness. It says, he became to us wisdom and righteousness. So if I'm in him, I am wise and I am right. I am right. What do I mean by right? Right means that I have friendship with God. Right means that I have been made acceptable to God through the acceptance of his son. I must be right within God. I must be wise if I'm going to work out my sanctification and my salvation with fear and with trembling. Look at the remainder of the verse. It says, and sanctification. So let's break it out just to that one word. By God's doing, you are in Christ Jesus who became sanctification. Jesus became my sanctification. You know why? Because in and of myself, I can't be sanctified. Maybe we're talking about those people who are holy rollers that we don't want to be right as those who try to be righteous without Jesus. I got a problem with those trying to be righteous without Jesus because righteousness without Jesus becomes self-righteousness. And if you're self-righteous, then you cease to be like God and you cease to be like man and the number of man is in perfection and nothing short of perfection can see its way into the kingdom. It says that and righteousness and sanctification. So through Jesus, I have been set apart. If we have been set apart, if we have been made holy through Jesus Christ, then why are we sitting up here wasting time with all this other stuff that's stopping us from being what we really are? All right. All right. All right. Why is it that when we take a survey of outsiders looking at the church, they can't distinguish between the church and the rest of the world? We got Christ in us but we're still acting like the world. Amen. We got the Holy Spirit in us, but we're still acting like the world. We got sanctification made available to us. We were sanctified when we came to Christ, but some kind of way, we keep coming back to the wrong side. We keep coming back to the wrong side. It's time to let go of the wrong side. It's time to let go of the wrong side. We just like that old typewriter. Whenever you hit that return button, zzz, boom. You get all the way to the end of the line. But then you like it over here. Boom. You keep coming back to where you started. Yes, sir. We need to get to where God wants us to be through the vehicle of God, which is the Holy Spirit, through the sanctification of God, which is the setting apart, which makes us peculiar, which makes us different than the world, except the fact that you are above what you see. Amen. Amen. It's okay to be holy. Don't let nobody make you feel bad because you're trying to do the right thing. Don't feel ashamed when you get around all those people drinking beer at the party. And you say, no, I'm not going to drink beer. What, you holier than thou? Uh, well, yeah, actually, I am. Amen. You got a problem with that? No, I don't want to drink. No, I don't want to smoke the dope. No, I don't want to have the sex before my man. Well, you think you better than me? Well, uh, actually, yes, I am. All right. Because I'm not doing that. And I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm saying God's will is for that not to be done. And if my goal is to please God, my goal is to do God's will. So if I'm doing God's will and you're not, I'm acceptable to God and you're not. So when I say to God, I'm better than you. If that makes you feel guilty, you need to keep reading your Bible. No, no, no. I, I, I'm not going to curse. Because the world 
is exemplified by profaneness. I'm not going to be profane. I'm not going to let the situation get me to a point to where I can't control my tongue. Anybody that can't control their tongue is a person who can't control their fleshly state of being. If I can't control my flesh, then my flesh controls me. And if my flesh controls me, the devil controls me because it's the devil who's in charge of the flesh. So yes, I am holier than that. And no, I don't make no apologies for it. I make no, 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 no. I'm not going to sit up here and explain myself to you. All I'm going to say is, this is what God's want, so let it be done. Yes. Stop being ashamed of who you are. Amen. Don't you know down deep that they want to be like you? All right. All right. All right. I wish All right. I didn't have to uh, indulge in promiscuity in order to make myself feel like I'm somebody. I wish I could be like that sister that go to True Bible. She don't have to go through the entire football team. He don't have to go through the entire cheerleading squad to feel like he's somebody. I can just be myself like she is herself. Lord, help me get to be like that person over there. You may be used to help them come to Christ. They're not going to tell you, I wish I was like you. They're going to go back and like, man, how does he do it? I can't do it so when I'm around, I'm going to make him feel like he's holy. All right, preacher. Learn how to be a Christian. Amen. Learn how to be a Christian. Amen. Listen, man, listen, listen, what you're doing is wrong. I don't care how you're trying to make me feel. I got the word of God to back me up. Now show me the words you got to back you up. When you show me God's word to back you up, then I'll cease doing what I'm doing. But since you can't show me from God's word that what you're doing is right, I think I'll be holier than thou. Amen. Thou meaning you. Uh -huh. Thou meaning you. Uh -huh. All right. All right. Jesus became our sanctification and our redemption. Verse 31, that just as it is written, let him who boasts, boast in the Lord. Amen. I don't want to brag on me no more. Because I'm nothing. Yes, sir. I, I, I'm not worried about my two big cars. It definitely ain't a wreck. Amen. I don't care about my Lincoln Continental <laughs> and my sunroof okay. Cadillac. All right, all right. That means nothing to me no more. All right. Yes, sir. Thank you, God, for the forerunner. Model 1996 SR5. All right, all right, all right, all right. Amen. All right. It cranks every morning, thank you, Jesus. All right, all right. It gets me from A to B, thank you, Jesus. And when you want to give me that next level, then to you be the Lord. But until you do, thank you for my sunroof forerunner lap. Sometimes we got to use homemade air conditioning. It's called rolling the window down. You don't know how blessed you are. Even if we default. If we default. Well, what's the big deal? Well, wait a minute now. Well, we got AAA credit. Wait, wait. No other country in the world has AAA credit. So we go down to double A credit. We better than the rest of them. You better thank God. All right, all right. I don't care if you live in the River Oaks or the CUNY homes. You ain't living in a dirt hut. All right, all right, all right. You don't have palm leaves for your roof. And those people are giving glory to God for their palm leaf roof, for their dirt floor. Yes, yes, yes. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling. Right. Work out your salvation yes, with sir. fear yes, and trembling. Yes, sir. Uh, turn to me with me to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3. See, some of you don't know what God's will is. Say, I need, I need to, know to know the will, the will of God. Man, I don't want you to think that I'm just sitting up here whistling Dixie. See, if it's just me talking, then you can close your Bible. But I want you to see what the Word of God says. If you look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse 3, the will of God is that you be sanctified. Look at verse 3. It says, for this is the will of God. Then it says, your sanctification. 
Your sanctification is the will of God. Your state of becoming holy, your state of becoming more like God every single day is God's will. It is not God's will that you look less like him every day. It is not God's will that you go out and try to be like the world so the world won't talk bad about you. It is not God's will for you to look glory to the devil. It is not God's will for you to sit down and, and, and do everything contrary to what he wants you to do. It's God's will for you to look like him, to act like him, to be like him, to walk like him, to talk like him, to sing like him, to pray like him, to preach like him, to love like him, to feel like him, to give like him, to be like him. Look at the text. He says, I know some of you out there are struggling. Some of you out there are struggling in ways to where you don't want nobody else to know. God's will is for you to be sanctified. And then he says, you know what? I'm going to be specific in one particular area of sanctification I think many people are struggling with. It's that area of sexual sin. Now, there's many areas of sanctification we need to be like God. But he knows that this is a problem for many people. I don't know who it is that has a problem in here. But if the truth is the truth, then wear it. Because when you wear the truth, it takes off sin. Amen. Look at the text. It says, for this is the will of God, your sanctification. That is, that you abstain from sexual immorality. Some people struggling with sexual immorality. Sexual immorality, sexual perversions, fornication specifically in this particular text. Sex outside of marriage. Don't think just because mama got away with it, because daddy got away with it, because there are some people who you look at as being holy now, wasn't holy in the past, and you want to use their past in order to justify your presence. Well, I know Pastor Oliver done some things before he was Pastor Oliver, so it's all right for me to do it, no, it ain't. You might need to think that the reason why Pastor Oliver Pitt talking so hard against it is because God delivered him from it. All right, all right, all right. Amen. All right. Don't use my sins as a license for you to sin. All right, all right, all right. Because God delivered me. Amen. And I don't need to write your book. God already wrote the book. All right, all right, all right. Don't use mama's past sins or daddy's past sins to justify what you want to do, knowing that what you want to do is wrong. But God forgave mama, God forgave daddy, so he's going to forgive me. Let me tell you something. I don't know if you're going to live through that sin for God to forgive you. So dealing with sexual sin, children, adults, married and unmarried, if you're married, keep it in the house. If you're unmarried, Keep it on lockdown. Amen. Children, run, flee, resist the devil, and he will flee. Yeah. Thank you. How are you going to be sanctified? How are you going to be set apart? But yet you're doing what the world do. How are you going to be set apart? That's God's will for you to be sanctified. If it's his will, flee whatever pulls you away from sanctification. Amen. Whatever pulls you away from holiness. Whatever pulls you away from purification, whichever pulls you away from righteousness, let it go. Amen. Tell that person, no thank you. No, I, I can wait. I can wait. I'm trying to make contact with the kids' eyes up in here because I know the pressures you're going through. You ain't going through no pressure. The good part is about getting old, we can always say that which you can't say. We can always say we done done that. It's like somebody being older than you. They can always say, but I'm older than you. What you going to say to that? No matter how I talk to Sister Davis, no matter what I want to say to Sister Davis, she always pull that trump card out, but I'm still older than you. I don't know what that means, but it's true. You can always say to your children, to other youngsters, I done been there, son. I didn't been to high school. I didn't felt the pressures of lust. 
I done felt the pressures of sin, and I may have not always won against it. I can tell you every time I lost, it cost me dearly. And I don't want you to have to pay the price that I paid. Amen. Don't do it. Amen. Amen. Now, once you done said what you have to say, and they choose to do it anyway, ain't no blood on your hands. Right. Ain't no blood. But make sure you done told them what you need to tell them. Because you want your children to be holy. Just like you want your house to be. How can the wife be holy and the husband not holy? How can the children be holy and the parents not holy? Go through your house. Go through your car. Go through your job. If something is in your house, I don't, I don't care if it's a picture, whatever, if, it, if it's dealing glory to another God, throw it out. If you're worshiping something by giving it more time, some of us need to throw TVs in the trash can. Amen. Let me help you out. If you're struggling with TV and that's your sin, that's one I'm not struggling with. Bring me your 65 inch. I'll hold it for you. Tell you <laughs> I'll, I'll go all the way down to 36. <laughs> I'll pray over you until you are able to defeat that demon. When you defeat it, come back to me. I'll give it back to you. I may have to unhook it first, but I'll give it back to you. Amen. But many of us need to get rid of some TVs because we watch more TVs than we study the Word of God. Amen. God is a jealous God. And he's the only one that righteous in a state of jealousy. When you become jealous, you become unholy. God is jealous and yet holy at the same time. Because can't nobody hold a torch to the Lord. He has the right to be jealous. Because ain't nobody like him. And he's confident and cocky enough as God to know that can't nobody do what he can do. Can't nobody hold you like Jesus. Can't nobody scold you like Jesus. Can't nobody nurse you like the Lord. Can't nobody feed you like God. Can't nobody teach you like God. Who is like the God? Nobody. Nobody. He says abstain from sexual immorality, church. In the book of Romans, you don't have to change, you don't have to turn now, but the whole uh, 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 the, the whole of Romans chapter one is talking about how God gave them over to the lust of their flesh. If you don't acknowledge God for being God, you have to first acknowledge that God is God. If you can't acknowledge the fact that God is God and there's no one like him and there will never be no one like him, then you will fall into the trap of the devil. God said because they took the knowledge of God, they took the truth about God and exchanged it for a lie. You know what you're doing whenever you go out there and you cease to be sanctified you're taking the truth about God and you are exchanging it for a lie that means you are refusing to acknowledge God as God look at Romans if you want to Romans chapter 1 he says he will give you over to the futility of your mind he will give you over. he will let you become lustful and do those things that depraved people do men after men women after women Because they took the truth about God and exchanged it for a lie. Now, how stupid is that? You go take something real and exchange it for something fake. That's like me taking my $1,500 Kirby and exchanging it for a $99 Hoover. One has metal parts, one has a lifetime guarantee, the other one breaks when you roll over a penny. plastic parts. I wonder why they don't for the most part give you refunds for plastic bottles. But they do for glass. Nobody says, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to go get rid of my glass for some plastic. Don't exchange the truth about God for a lie. The world is a lie. Satan is in charge of this world for a period of time until God burns it up, church. 
Now abstain from sexual immorality. I don't care who's from. Just say no. Say no. I want you to look at me in 2 Thessalonians. We're talking about our role of holiness to heaven. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 13. We're still talking about sanctification, being made holy. Paul is talking to the church again at Thessalonica. He says, but we should always give thanks to God for you, brethren, beloved by the Lord, because, here we go, God has chosen you from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the Spirit and faith in the truth. God predestined us to be saved through sanctification. He chose us before we were even born to be saved through sanctification. And wait a minute, wait a minute. I thought once you come to Christ, you're saved. Well, that's true. For those who truly come to Christ. Amen. If you truly come to Christ, sanctification is not going to be a difficult thing for you. It's not going to be an easy thing. You're going to have ups and downs. As Christ was persecuted, so are you going to be persecuted. But a true believer in Jesus Christ is going to pass the sanctification test. They're going to work out their salvation with fear and trembling. There's no doubt about it because Christ is in them. But for those who just give a lip service about being a member of the kingdom, see, because membership has its benefits, when the times get tough, you're going to see them get to hide. They're going to stick their heads in the ground like an ostrich and pretend like what's going on around them ain't really going on. When times get tough, they're not going to pray. When times get tough, they're going to try to protect by their own means what they feel is important. Be it their money, be it their family, they are unholy. They don't know how to reach out in the spirit by faith to let God move on their situations. God has chosen you from the beginning. That's before you was even born. That's your name being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. That's before you was even conceived of. Before the world was even founded, God chose you. Don't tell me that don't set you apart. From the beginning, for salvation, that means that certain people God didn't choose. Certain people are predestined to go to hell. That don't make God a bad God. Judas went to hell. That makes God bad. Judas was on his way to hell before Jesus called him as an apostle. Because it was all to fulfill the prophecy of the Lord. So don't get mad at God because some people... Is destined for hell. You ain't worried about those going to hell. All you need to be concerned about is you going to heaven. Amen. Amen. That's all you need to be concerned about. Don't waste your time on the negative. Waste your time, or it ain't even a waste of time at that point. Use your time wisely in thinking about what you need to do to enable your sanctification, your holiness before the Lord. Amen. What can I do to be more holy today? What can I say? To be more holy today. Amen. How can I act? Amen. Okay, here comes a situation. Lord, I see the situation coming. Help me to think spiritually about it All right. before All right. I open my mouth. All right. All right. Because All right. what comes out of my mouth right. can dictate how the rest of this situation goes. Yes. If I speak out of the flesh, mm. then that situation has a fleshly overtone on it. But if I speak out of the spirit, then God can turn that thing on the dime, get all the glory, and in the end, we both be better off for what we experience. Amen. You have to think before you respond. Yes. In the spirit, in the spirit, he said he predestined us from the beginning for salvation through sanctification by the spirit, the Holy Spirit, and faith in the truth. The truth is Jesus Christ. Where you gonna put your stock in? Philosophies and theories of the world? And when you got the word of God right here? 
it saddens my heart that a lot of people will leave here today and the last time they touch their Bible will be today until next Sunday. That's the God's honest, sad truth. Sad truth. One last scripture for us. This is very important. In your holy rolling to heaven. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14. Hebrews 12 and 14. You need to know that you got to be sanctified if you want to go to heaven. Who want to go to heaven? Amen. Raise your hand. Amen. Put your hands down. Every hand went up. Every single hand went up. But mine, put mine up right now. <laughs> I want to be in that number. <laughs> and when the saints go marching in, don't leave me up here standing at the pulpit looking at the empty church. Amen. All y'all going on and left me here and I'm doing the preaching? Oh, no. <laughs> Give me right now. <laughs> Amen. Turn around, y'all gone. <laughs> so preachers going to be like that. Yeah. Yeah. They done preached to everybody else by faith into receiving Christ on up in the heaven, yeah. but got left behind themselves. Amen. Help us, Lord. Amen. Look at the text. Look at the text. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse 14, it says, pursue peace. That means go after. That means chase down, look after, run after, chase down, go after peace with all men, not just with those you like. Pursue peace with all men and the sanctification and the holiness and the setting apart of God without which no one will see the Lord. Don't think you can get into heaven and not be set apart. Without the sanctification, without the working out the daily process of dealing with people, the daily process of dealing with situations, the daily process of dealing with children, the daily process of dealing with finances, the daily process of dealing with marriages, of dealing with jobs, of dealing with illnesses, that's your sanctification process. Dealing with lust, dealing with people pushing up on you, trying to get you to do things you're about to supposed to do. That, that's your sanctification test. Amen. You have to pass that test to confirm the fact that you truly accepted Jesus. It's not about what you say. It's about what you do. Amen. How you respond. And if you can't grow in your daily process of dealing with all those things I just mentioned, plus all the ones I can't think of right now, don't think you're going to heaven. Amen. You got the power. Yes. You have been chosen to be set apart. It's God's will for you to be sanctified. Amen. Set apart. Saved. Filled with the Holy Ghost. So the next time somebody say, oh, you just trying to be a holy roller. Say, you, am, I, am I doing good? Oh, you think you're a holy roller? All right. Good. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. I'm trying to get you where I'm at. I want you to think you're a holy roller too. Stop saying that. Oh, he thinks he's a holy well. Well, the key is, is he or is he not? If he's not a holy roller, then he can't be thinking he's a holy roller. All right. He's a Pharisee at that point, a hypocrite. All right. All right. All right. If he's a hypocrite, don't call him a holy roller. Call him a hypocrite. All right. All right. Don't say you think you're a holy roller. Say, oh, you're just a hypocrite. Mm. There you go. Mm. But if you see a holy roller, Say, man, you are the holiest holy roller ever seen. Teach me how to get like you. Teach me how to respond in situations the way you do. Teach me how to study my word the way you do. Teach me how to walk in the presence of lust and not give in to it. Teach me how to rely upon the Holy Spirit. Teach me what you, I want to be a holy roller. Say, I want to be a holy roller. It's all right to be a holy roller. It's all right. To be a holy road. It's okay. To be a holy road. I will. Be a holy road. To be one then. Now I'm going to tell you something. 
Don't put that bumper sticker on the back of your car and then can't live up to it. Now you're a hypocrite. Matter of fact, just be one. Don't advertise it in word. Don't plaster it on your car. Don't just be one. That's all you need to do. The minute you stick it on the back of your car, God gonna make a fool out you. Because you don't have to advertise it in bumper sticker form. You need to advertise it in your walk. It's time to be holy rollers, church. Roll our way on into heaven. Holy. Set apart to God. Most gracious Father in heaven.